Hello everyone and welcome to the Net Saviors Podcast, Episode 2. In this one, we'll be covering Battle Network 2. And of course, I won't be doing this alone. I have my good chum, Mega Master X, here with me as always. Hey ladies and gentlemen, Mega Master X here. Hello Adele, how are you tonight? Uh, I'm looking forward to a surprise at my door, hopefully not within the next 10 minutes, but the next 90. I don't know, my uh, my sources indicate that it's nowhere near happening anytime soon, so... Thank God for <laughs> slow service. So we've got some time. Yes, which is perfect, because we're going to need time, because apparently we did something terrible last week. We were wrong on the internet. Yeah, we, we kind of messed up a lot. And... As such, we are here to rectify the wrongs that have been done against the community as a whole. And uh, thanks to our good friend, Raj, right? Taraj42, yep. Yes, Taraj, I'll just add it. One, two, three. And thanks to our good friend, Taraj42, who has pointed out that a few things we said about BN1 were not correct. And thankfully we have the notes up here, we'll just go over them real quick. <coughs> So why don't you lead us off, MMX? What All we right. got? What so we first and on? foremost, charge shot damage is times 8 and times 16. So it's multiples of those two. Um, strange. Yeah, it's, it's kind of weird. But we did kind of mess that up. Um, it was just because of shifting for easy for bit shifting for easy multiplication. Uh, mm. So it, it's really kind of just the way that the game was coded was, right. was why that those had to be such obscure numbers. It wasn't necessarily to break auras although i think that might have just been an unintended side effect of it but uh yeah <laughs> so uh, we also messed up on uh the fact that the game gives you access to escape uh to a couple of escapes uh really early on you just have to look let me try that again <clears throat> three two one uh we also kind of messed up in that the game actually gives you access to several escapes pretty early on um you do have to just look for them but they are there um the uh, speed running strategies have three of them before even starting the school computers. So, oh my god! Yeah, that's it's a pretty substantial difference. They're not as hard to find as we made it made it out to be in the original episode. So, okay, that's yeah. that's fair. Yeah, three is actually a pretty good number, but but I can have ten. So what's the nah. yeah? I mean, why not? You know, if you if you're gonna go hard, <laughs> go hard. Um, a third of my folder is nothing but escapes. <laughs> Just in case, I'll always draw this recovery tens and escapes. Ah, um, I don't need to fight. <laughs> who needs fighting when you can escape? Uh, we also messed up uh, on the hub dot bat stuff. The hub split was pretty, yeah. So apparently, instead of my delightful point two percent, it's point zero zero one percent. Which okay, that's fair. And uh, supposedly the eye color is wrong, but honestly, I kind of like that headcanon. Oh come on, we're 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 here for facts. I, I'm here for headcanon. That's all BN is. Just like Battleship Challenge is headcanon. I mean, Battleship Challenge is like a fever dream, right? Although it is totally canon and arguably the best in the series. But that's another topic for another time. My god. <laughs> but, uh, uh, what else? Uh, then, then we touched up on BN4 briefly. Uh, the required dark chip doesn't dock your HP. That's, and, yeah. Yeah, that's that's just a whatever thing. It's I mean that's the to reiterate, it's the dark chip that you have to use in order to progress yes. the story. At one point, spoilers, you you have oh, to use wow. a dark chip in order to beat Shade Man, so it doesn't dock your HP for that. Ah uh, yes. Wee! Wee, 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 wee! I hate his I hate that so much, just trying to read as a kid. Yeah. Um that's really weird. What, and then one last thing we did mess up on was you can apparently max all the buster stats. Um it's just Finding all of them can be a hassle, and they are super expensive. They are absurdly expensive. So I guess there's no real point to do it unless no. you're that guy. No, unless you're like min-maxing Battle Network 1 for some reason. Or you're just I mean, having if... that much trouble in the internet. My lord. I, <laughs> I need this speed. You don't understand. <laughs> it's important. It's it's paramount. Yeah, I'll get right up on it. Ah! Auras. All right, so that's all clarified. Yeah, thank so, you again, Taraj. So that's good. It's so much tonight. much appreciated. Yeah. So episode one, I think that we we also kind of got some feedback. We were we were pretty, admittedly, we were pretty hard on Battle Network one for what it was. I I think we we focused a little too much on the negative, and I think that it was a really good game and it deserves respect. So 
Let's... I do respect it, just like I respect my elders. I don't like them much, but I respect oh them. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Dr. Wily. He's homeless and collecting cans in the, the anime series in Access, but no one bats an eyelash. Nope. Nope. Uh, he was a bad man. I'm, he deserves this. I'm going to make wireless jacking technology. Anyway, so, okay. So, Adele. Yes, sir. Let's talk about Battle Network 2, the second game in the series. Yes, the good game in the series. I, I mean, it's good in its own right. But we're I, not going to spend the episode talking bad about it, because we. I think we have no. a lot of really good stuff to say. Yeah, no, no. Again, Battle Network 2, one, okay, Battle Network 1 is the rough game that you needed to set the stage for 2 to exist. Exactly. But in that regard, 2 is an amazing game. And it takes, like, everything from one, and it stacks it up nicely for you. And it's not to say that it is without fault. It does still have a lot of things wrong with it. But, of the same token, it introduces amazing things. We get style changes. The net is actually, you know, unique. The overworld is incredibly large. And it's it's a good game. I, and I feel like... You should play one, but I think if you're starting off in the series, you should play two or three. Yeah, definitely. I mean, there's there's just so much that's improved upon from Battle Network 1. It's it's like Capcom actually took the time to craft an experience that was a significant upgrade from the original while still keeping the feeling of the original, right? And I don't know if maybe that's yeah. due to the art style or... Um, if that's maybe just because Capcom was playing it safe and Battle Network 1 sold well enough, they didn't want to mess with the formula. Um, Mm -hmm. But uh, I've got a couple, like, I don't know, a few bullet points of things that I want to take a bit to... I'm going to start that. Fuck. Oh, my God. (laughs) Three, two, one. I want to take a moment to take a step back and look at these incremental upgrades uh, from Battle Network 1 to 2 because... I think there's a lot of good in them, and um, is that something that you'd like to drill down on? Sure. <clears throat> I will say, though, isn't that the point of beta testing your game? It, like Battle Network 1 was? Does Capcom even really battle test their game? They beta did! Test That's, that, the was, that, was, that was what Battle Network 1 was. It was the beta test for 2. What was the beta test of Cla- uh... Nothing. <laughs> I don't think Legends was beta tested very much. <laughs> don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. They kick the can. Just have fun. Let's kick the can simulator. Yeah. All right. So let's jump into this because there is a lot to talk about, and I'm actually really excited. So, start off with the basics. Battle Network Two is apparently is quite obviously supposed to be the immediate follow up to One. However, if we're following the canon. We go from Battle Network 1 to Network Transmission, which is an evil we will talk about in a separate episode, into Battle Network 2. And honestly, nothing from that interferes with 2, does it? You don't actually have to play that game. Wait, but we're forgetting Battleship Challenge. That happens after Network Transmission. But but bosses from 3 are in Battleship Challenge, so does it happen before or after? It says at the end of Battleship Challenge like uh, to be continued in Mega Man Battle Network 2. (laughs) <laughs> Why is Beast Man here? Why did they do this? It's so confusing. It's Inti creates magic. It's, it's like... So, okay, okay. So what you do is you play Battle Network 1, then you go into Network Transmission to keep the story going. And then at the end of Network Transmission, Lan falls asleep, he dreams the Battleship Challenge, and wakes up in time for Battle Network 2. Headcanon. Yeah, I, I dig that headcanon. I can get with that. All right. So you don't actually have to play those other two games in order to put together, you know... You, you don't even have to actually play Battle Network 1 to play 2, if you think about it. No. I mean, you well, you miss out a lot uh, on a lot of the really good nuances between yes. the two games if you just jump right into 2, but I think Battle Network as a whole is a series that you can technically jump into at any game and right. kind of get an idea of what's going on. It's not suggested because obviously you're going to be like, well, who are these classmates? Why is Yai's forehead so big? And things like that, you know. But... Um, <laughs> Wait, that's never answered, though. It really isn't. It never is. We don't even know what her parents look like. It could be hereditary. What if her dad has a ginormous forehead? No, too? they showed her parents in um the anime, didn't they? Did they? Yeah, yeah, they did. Huh. Well, damn. 
I remember it's like in one of the earlier episodes too. With the get with when they uh, had access to the game early. <gasps> oh yeah! Oh my god! And the gosh. dad was like, "Oh well, you know." <laughs> <laughs> what do you know, daughter? I own this company. I guess I could give you the game early, but we're going to wait. <laughs> Have a giant robot that's a building. Yep. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, like you said, you can jump in at any point. Uh, you don't need, necessarily need to play any of the games to play any of the other games, but it is nice if you play through one. Uh, you Especially with the post game, if you when you get to the if and when you get to Undernet area... And the world through area and all that, you learn more about like base. You understand a little bit more about him in two, what his whole shtick is, and then from that it leads into three, and you understand why he's such a big thing on the like spectrum. Yeah, not <laughs> no pun intended there, but yeah, that's yeah. one thing that I think sticks out a lot to people. That's really memorable for Battle Network Two is the base side story because it, a lot of people like I don't know. A lot of people gravitate towards base just because he has that aura of mystery. You know, he's mm-hmm. obviously like ah, aura the underdog. No pun intended, but <laughs> he has this kind of aura of mystery about him, and he, there's just a lot of unknowns. He's kind of like a tragic anti-hero. He's not a villain. Oh, very. You know, he's not a villain. He's just he's. I hate to say it. He is misunderstood on every level. He is, especially and that misunderstanding has made him resentful. If you really, did, if you look at issue volume six of the Mega Man, uh, the Rock Man EXE manga or Mega Man NT Warrior in English, uh, at mm-hmm. the very end of volume six, Base's backstory is actually told. Now, granted, we haven't really talked very much about the manga and the correlation between the different mediums, being the anime games and the manga. The manga right. is not really canon. It's kind of its own interpretation of the universe as a whole. But It's a good interpretation, It is. It's, it's amazing, except when you get to the Beast arc. But I, yeah, I digress. About that. The, the base backstory in the sixth volume... I think it's, I'm pretty sure it's the six. Yeah, it is. It is the six volume. Um, <laughs> it, it really paints Forte or Bass in a even more tragic light because he mm-hmm. felt like Dr. Cossack, who made him, basically abandoned him in the same laboratory in which he was created. So it drills down. He was um, being detained because of his getability program. And then, you know, he was like, he was talking to Dr. Cossack. He's like, man, these are strengths. Do they make me look good? And Dr. Cossack's like, yeah, fit to kill, buddy. And then, you know, the police <laughs> navvies start to get really corrupt and are like, your ability is too strong. We have to kill you. And then he's like, where is Dr. Cossack in all this? And he's just getting the crap beaten out of him. And then that's how he gets his his navvy symbol slashed. It goes, it's really good detail. I highly recommend picking it up. If nothing else, just to see the side story. Why are we rambling about base? Let's because continue. he's a major plot point of two. It leads in perfectly. He, yeah, he really Be- is. Because just like in one, base is a side piece. True. He's there at the end. You don't know about him unless you go exploring. And when you find him, it's very... You, you feel accomplished. You're like, wow, what? Where was this dude at? He's it, awesome. Exactly. But, however, in two... They take that, like, you find him at the end, and he fights you at the end of one, and it's like, oh, you're strong, I'll let you live, blah, blah, blah. And he, you know, he goes away. And then two comes along, and they take the whole idea of base, and how he is the, he is one of the strongest navvies, because, you know, Mega Man's obviously on that par. Yeah. And uh, his whole get ability, he just gets stronger and stronger, and they take base, and they go, they go in a really weird direction. <laughs> They do, but it's it's a um, unique direction in that mm. it builds up his role as an anti-hero. Yes. I don't even know if we can really consider him an anti-hero because he doesn't directly interfere with the plot. He's just there and a persistent threat. Yes, but and you're right, he actually doesn't. So, into this takes place a year, or no, not a year even. It just says the following summer mm-hmm. after one. And probably like a month after Network Train. Who knows? Who cares? Um, so after you beat World 3, a new thing called Gospel pops up. And their whole shtick is they want to use... Or rather, they want to recreate base out of bug fragments. And they do this, and they want to make like an army of them to take over the world, because that's how strong base is. Why not? Mm-hmm. But... They didn't know that the method they were using was, like, really messed up, because what could go wrong using bug fragments? 
Right. Uh, <laughs> and so what happens is <clears throat> they attempt to increase like their copy base's power, and they accidentally make gospel. <laughs> Not to mention they also make an entire apartment complex disintegrate and become highly radioactive. Yes, that's right. Land contracts, like, very severe cancer. Um, <laughs> real talk, though. Like, he is exposed to that for entirely. He's like, ugh, not can, good. Can you just imagine Land just jacked into a server in Kotobuki? And he's just like, I'm dying. Mega Man's like, I got a random encounter. I can't help it. <laughs> I just I, suddenly took a very dark turn. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's what happens at the end of three. They both just die, and, and then, then four and five and six are like the flashes of what he could have done. I, I wow! Didn't, I didn't, we're How's get, that for a head can? <laughs> we're getting pretty meta now. <laughs> we're getting a little too meta for my tastes, but but yeah. So back to two. Your your whole goal is to stop Gospel, who... Is there really a point to spoiling at this point? To what? I mean, yeah, I, I mean, people... At this point, I think that it's safe at this point to place a spoiler warning. Uh, going forward in this episode, if you have not played Battle Network 2, or if you intend to play Battle Network 2, please just pause the episode and skip ahead to... <laughs> go play the, Battle Network 2 real go, quick. Well, put, yeah, put it on pause... Just tunnel Battle Network for like 10 or 12 hours and then come back. Oh, let's, 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 let's chit chat. Let's sit by the fire. Or you can skip down to the timestamp in the description to the end where we have a few special announcements at the end of the episode. And mm. then when you do play Battle Network 2, come back, re listen to the episode, and enjoy it. But be as it may, that is our spoiler warning. Please yes. don't please don't hate us, but go ahead. Go ahead, Adele. So as we fight gospel. Uh, who to use, who used some really underhanded attack? Like you thought World Three was bad. Gospel is like extortion. they're bombing things. Yeah, they're extortion. Uh, they're tearing everything apart. Radioactive buildings. It gets really bad. Super um, dark. Yes, it turns out though. Uh, past all this, we meet a character named Sean, who is actually he he is someone we revisit in three. And that's where it kind of connects. Like, it does help to play them in order. <clears throat> because you'll meet Sean in 3 and be like, who are you? Yeah. Don't you remember we had such great times? It's like, Ooh. Turns out Sean is, like, the he is the <clears throat> leader of Gospel, who is actually a pup. It's a shadow organization for Dr. Wily in World 3. That's like, I don't know, that, I feel like... <clears throat> I feel like Gospel could have and probably should have been its own independent organization yes. with no ties to World 3, because yeah. having multiple threats kind of makes the world, like the whole universe and narrative feel a little more alive. But I really respect their decision to make it loop back, and mm -hmm. I really like the idea of the criminal mastermind of this entire organization is a kid? A shunned kid. Like, a sh he, he yeah. has a really good backstory. Um I'm trying to remember what was his whole thing it was like his parents his parents died in a plane wreck right mm -hmm. because of a malfunction in the computer and he gets pissed and decides to make gospel like it's not a very uh, it's yeah. loose it's loose yeah like but... he's, his parents die he's raised by crappy relatives uh, he doesn't like being an orphan, so he runs off, learns all kinds of networking stuff, and he gets, like, a dramatic pass because of it, and he makes gospel. And his outfit is pretty rad. It really is. I mean, it looks also radioactive. Now, I think, I feel like his suit should be radioactive just because it glows similarly to the way that Kotobuki glows. Yeah, that it's be... purple to green and then orange and black with white. And long, long, luscious hair. Tenderly hair. <laughs> and a gingerly gaze. Ah, if I remember, it's a hologram, though, isn't it? It is, yeah. Yeah, that's actually really cool. Yeah, it's a, it's a protective suit, which is why he could... So it's it's a radiation suit. That happens to glow. <laughs> yeah, and there's also a hologram. Huh? 
I mean... Whatever. It's the future. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, land still can rollerblade in radioactiveness. It, it makes sense. I mean, you can't. I mean, I I haven't tried. Let me let me go to Fukushima and uh, pop some uh, pop some wheelies hey, to Fukushima's escape my feelings. Fukushima's doing all right. Come on. I mean, yeah, but it's doing better, especially when they had after that Pokemon Go event. It's uh, doing a lot better financially. <laughs> so it, you didn't hear about that? They had like a Lapras event there. What? Yeah, you could just catch a ton of Lapras around the Fukushima area and uh, a little bit down the coast, the areas that were affected by the. Uh, Earthquake. So you mean to tell leakage. me I can get cancer and Lapras? Well, not anymore. Oh. You can only get cancer. Oh. Well, uh, so our... <laughs> <laughs> Holy it's shit. good, yeah? It's, it's good. Um, so let's talk... Let's kind of direct it a little bit towards the battle system. Because <clears throat> I want to yeah. I want to talk about the, uh, the upgrades from BN1 to BN2. And I think the battle system is a great place to start with that. Yeah, so in BN1, we, we had a bit of a very odd... Do you want to start in the folders, or do you want to go straight into like, the actual battle? Let's dig into the folders first. Okay, so in BN1, you could have ten copies of any chip, except Navi chips. You can only have five. Oh, boo-hoo. In this, we go down. We, 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 we streamline a little bit. You can only have five of each chip. And that kind of forces you to use a larger variety. So you can't just pack... 10 hero swords, 10 knight swords, 10 fighters. All right, my folder's complete. I'm ready to roll. Now you have five, and it introduces the asterisk code. Which is which... by far the biggest thing. I mean, <clears throat> the way the asterisk chips work, for those not familiar with the series, are that traditionally uh, a, a cardinal rule of Battle Network is that you can only ch select chips that are either the same chip, like, for instance, cannon, multiple cannons regardless of their code, or you can select multiple different kinds of chips if their code is the same. However, uh -huh. Battle Network 2 introduces that introduces the sweet asterisk code that is essentially a wild card. So you can pick, <clears throat> you know, uh, Cannon A, uh, Area Steel A, and um, Recub 10 asterisk. And you would be able yes. to do it with that. So it, it, it may seem insignificant on the surface, but it actually opened up a lot of fluidity into the custom selection. Uh -huh, uh -huh. The only thing that uh, was restricted in it is you couldn't do, like, Canon A, Canon B, Asterisk, Canon. They had to be of the same... I don't think... No, you, you could, could do that. You could. Know. That's, That's right, because it was Canon. I'm sorry. You couldn't do, like, an A, B, and you... then an Asterisk if they were different... You, you can't but if they do were the like, same kind. Yeah, you could. You can't do like a cannon A high cannon A. I know that doesn't exist. You can't do a cannon A shotgun A and then. Well, you could do it like that. You can't. You can't do <laughs> cannon A, cannon B, and then high cannon asterisk. You can't do it. Right there, you go. That's better. That's better. But uh, the issue though with this, because as good as that is, asterisk code did open up a lot of slots. It may have opened up. Too many slots. Mm. Because in Battle Network 2, and I do believe they stopped doing this after, every chip is available in Asterisk. What? Yeah. You can get every chip in Asterisk in 2. Oh, via the chip trader? Yeah. yeah. But you can still get every chip in Asterisk. Is that? It, huh. Including. Yeah, I'm not joking. Including Navi chips. That's that's kind of busted. It is like okay, like you said though, it has to be through the chip trader. And after one, they it started doing the autosave because I looked into it. We were also wrong about that. Three is not the first one I did the autosave. Two also did autosave on the trader. Yeah, but it still like it still gave you access to this stuff if you just kept pumping into it, which is absurd. That is pretty nuts. So you could have like. And we're going to touch on program as but you could do Life Sword 3 off of nothing but Asterisk. You could do Gator off of nothing but Asterisk. Crazy. Crazy. Yeah. Very. But that being said, you know, it... While that did take a lot of effort to do and the payoff was absurd, Asterisk ships were needed. It definitely made things really great. It did. It really did. Um... I feel like that it took kind of the pain out of folder building. It made you think a little bit more about folder building. Because like you right. said, I mean, it was 
pretty brainless before. You could just dumpster hero swords and knight swords in your folder, and just it doesn't really mm-hmm. matter what else you had in there. But yeah, in, I mean, when be, you're dealing that much damage, who gives a crap? Well, yeah, that's true. Um, I mean, in BN2, you're, you got to sit there and think, okay, well, what asterisk chips do I have available to me? What will help mm-hmm. me get Gator out quicker? You know, things like that. Um, <laughs> so. That's, that's the, the, man, I wish I could laugh at that. That's the actual truth. It is. Gator was the definitive PA. It was. Um, it, that, I'm glad, though, that you brought that up because it, that is a mindset that persists to this day. With, it is. Uh, like, all the way through B and 6, people are still looking at their chips going, well, these are available. Okay, I can use these navvies because they're, you know, asterisk code. Well, what else do I have access to here? Okay, but 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 And it definitely makes for, like, a different variety of folders each and every time. There's no real set meta folder, I... which is really good. I mean, there's... <laughs> in, in Battle Net- speaking strictly of Battle Network Two, there there were there was the Prism chip. Oh, I, I was talking about six. Oh, and six, yeah. There's like, yeah. I mean, there's no like definitive be all end all folder. No, no, no. Like, there's good chips you want to use, but there's no folder that's like you will win every time, which is not really the case in a lot of the earlier games. That actually, have that problem, don't they? I mean. Two suffered from it, I think, more than any other installment. I've, of yes. course, three had its its shortcomings in like folder back, and you could area steal onto the last square. And plant man and flash man. Plant man and flash man, but sensor. It's <laughs> oh god. But I mean, like, you, it's not like it, two had the single strategy that if you did not run this strategy, you were at a statistical and really like just a general disadvantage to your opponent yeah it was yeah, it, it was shame. kind of it was kind of like modern Yu-Gi-Oh. it's it's pop off or be popped off on so mm-hmm. uh that's just pretty much what it is that's competitive bn2 in a nutshell but... so back to the battle system uh the other moving away from folder now they also streamlined the custom screen they did give it giving it a bit keeping it the same for the most part but again sh- trimming it down and giving it additional functionality so originally in one you had 15 slots which again is huge that's half your folder right there but now we're down to 10 which i think is better because that makes you think a little bit more of all right now i've taken the time i have 10 chips here what do i want to use because i'm not going to have 10 chips no wait do you keep your 10 chip advantage after that or is it I don't. After that turn. I don't recall. I know that in Battle Network One, as soon as you use any of the chips after you add, um, mm-hmm. it's they're gone. But I can't I really. I feel like they'd be gone. I don't. I think, I think it's. Think so. I think it follows the same rules in one. I think that's something yeah. we'll have to go to the lab for. So please don't lambast us if uh, <laughs> if we're wrong on this. But uh, I'm sorry. I haven't played this game in like 15 years. It's, it's been. A, it's been a bit. It's been a bit. But uh, but yeah, I, I, Battle Network Two does keep the ad system. Um, if you haven't gone back and listened to the first episode of the Net Saviors podcast, first and foremost, you absolutely should because it was a pretty good episode. And second off, um, the ad system is where you, instead of using chips for a turn, you would be restricted to only your buster and you would uh, go through the turn, survive it, and then when you go back to the custom screen, you have access to another f- set of five chips. Um, as Adele said, in BN1, you could get up to 15 chips, which is pretty much half your folder. Um, but in very BN2, brainless, actually. <laughs> it's very. It's the only downside is is that you're just at such a huge disadvantage because I, I don't know the Buster was just grossly overpowered in BN1. But we're talking about BN2, so yeah. Yes. So we had 15. Now we have 10, and they added one more special thing. So let's say. You don't like the chips you have on the select screen, right? Okay, I'll select three of these, and then I'll hit the add button. What it does now is you can take those three chips. It will shuffle them. Or rather, I'm sorry, it will discard them, not shuffle. Mm-hmm. It will discard them, and then those three will never come back, and you'll get three new ones in addition to the next five. So you'll have you know a full ten along with not the same selection as before, which is really nice. Another thing that was prevalent in Battle Network 2 that was not in Battle Network 1 are regular chips. Um, 
it's the ability to set a chip as the first draw every time you go into battle. You obtain regular memories throughout the course of the game, uh, and then you can... Uh, every chip has a uh, megabyte value, and then if you have sufficient regular memory to equal or go beyond the chip's megabyte value, you could set it as your regular chip and you draw it every time you go into battle, which is really yeah. nice. It, 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 on top of the asterisk code, really drove home that folder building is a lot better than just dumping these super powerful chips in there and just hold for the best. <laughs> Well, to an extent. Um, the biggest thing it did open up was, like, you could always start the battle with, like, an area grab. True. You could always start the battle with a barrier or heal or, you know, whatever you felt you need the most or escape. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, no, it, it's definitely something that has been improved upon in the years. Like, you know, you, more, more chips come out, different selections are made. Uh, in six... I think that... Was 6 the first one that introduced the tag system? No. Uh, f- 4. 4? I think... Okay. I think well, was, they improve was... upon it in later series by introducing the tag system, which is kind of similar to that, except every time you draw... You choose two chips this time, as well as your regular, but when you draw one of those tag chips, you'll always draw the other one, correct? Yes. Which... So, like, it, it's like a sure... A never... Like, it, it'll always happen. Yeah, so let, let's say in six you chew you regular chip, uh, you know, corn shot C, and then you just tag chip D and E. You'll always have if, that corn fiesta. If you if you draw D, the way that it works is if you draw D, you will also draw E. Mm-hmm. Uh, so and those both have to be um, under your megabyte value. Yes. So, but that that's that's in further installments. Battle Network Two doesn't yeah. have tag chips. It does have regular chips, which is really nice. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Two, two is again setting the stage for things that are going to be like really big later on. Oh yes, and it does it quite well. Yes. All right. So let's get out the battle system. We've been here for like a year now. <laughs> let's talk about something. Well, Tangles' battle system. Style change. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Battle Network Two introduces forget. style changes and that elements. Yes, we get rid of the armor, we ditch it completely, and we have style change. However, however, we were we got rid of the armor, but we kept the power up system. Can't let it Ugh. go. Can't let it go. And so style change is instead of Mega Man wearing whatever what firewood, aqua, and electric armor, mm-hmm. which did nothing really except give you like weaknesses. Yeah. I guess it gave you some resistance, question mark? I, I guess you took less damage from electric if you had wood. I never really tested it. I n- was a kid. So Sick. instead now, what happens is, this depends on the way you fight. So let's say you use your buster a lot, right? If you use that like throughout the game up to a point when you will style change, you get something called the buster style. Or gut, is it gut style, it's right? It's gut style. Gut style, that's right. Along with a random element, one of the four. Which and can be it, modified based on the number of chips of that element that you use. So say, for instance, if is you... Is that what it is? If you stack your folder, this also is really big in B and 3, too. But if you mm-hmm. use a lot of fire-based chips, you're going to get a fire-based style. Oh, I was wondering how that worked. That's... Oh, I, damn, I learned something today. <laughs> so, you get a style change. I think you only get it once, though. You do. And you can't yeah. get it again. So it's very... Im- that's something I never really... That's something I like and I hate about this game, right there. Is style changes are awesome. They definitely mix up how you play. It dictates what you're going to do. However, if you don't know what it is and don't expect it to happen, you're going to get stuck with something that you might not like. I.e. Grass Shield. Oh. <laughs> no, it's fine. You, you. I wanted Aqua Custom. Nah, dude, your grass shield, here it comes. Oh, like, no. Yeah, they were... Um, hmm. So, again, you get five different style changes. And... Uh, hang on, hang on. Let's, I'll just have this part up. Da, 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 da. Here we go. Okay. So, your five this styles are... Gut, you get gut style, which powers up your buster. So, you get, like, a machine gun if you rapid tap it. Which is amazing. However... The downside to that in two is your buster is reduced to one. It only has one power, so it doesn't matter how much you power up that 
gauge in the power-up system, you are not getting more than one damage a shot out. Which, I mean, you're also not able to move while you're in that Gatling mode, which leaves you susceptible to damage. Yes. Which is kind of unfortunate. Yeah, but that's only when you use the uh, the rapid fire. However, if you use the regular buster, its power is its power level is doubled, and yeah. it's capable of being upgraded to Pierce Guards <laughs> in Battle Network Three. <laughs> but that's three. So in two, your your buster level is doubled, but you're stuck at one if you rapid fire. I do believe you also get super armor. Um. I don't believe so. I think shield style. Ha- I don't remember. We're gonna. No, to- no, no. It's it's yeah. No, in two you get that, but in three they give it to you as a custom. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So in two, like again, these styles all carry over to the next game. Uh, but in two they do like some different things. Again, they're tweaked in three. So gut style gives you double buster level. If you gives you rapid fire, but at the cost of being at one power, and it gives you super armor, which is incredible. Not because this. then you don't flinch. Yeah, that's true. Or Not get paralyzed. Yes, yes. Unlike the early status guard. Oh. Uh, moving on, we also have custom style, which I think is one of the better ones. Yep. Because of what it opens up the avenues to. So in two, you start with seven chips in your custom screen. A huge advantage. With- yeah, that's really crazy. Um, I do believe Aqua Custom is the preferred style. It is. Yeah, man, what style sucks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there's not the much. There's not much else to say. It's very basic, and uh, you get it by just using a bunch of non navy chips as much as possible on in a turn, and you focus more on, like battle chip and program advanced strategies. And yeah, it looks pretty basic. Like you just get a bigger backpack essentially. Yeah, that's pretty much what it is. Yeah, or as Gut Style, you get your big, uh... Big old gun. My one, my one big hand. <laughs> I don't want to make the joke. I mean... No, please don't. <laughs> Whereas Gut Style gives you just your really, big arm to Really intimidating people. games of rock, paper, scissors. Uh, yeah. I, what are you going to choose? Gee, I wonder. <laughs> uh, so, Shield Style is not the great one. Um, it's not bad, though, I will say, because it has its advantages. So, Shield Style is used by you playing a little bit more defensively, use recovery chips, guards, things like that. You got a big shield on your arm, and you look like a footballer with your helmet. Football! Uh, you start every battle with a 10 HP barrier, and you get a shield by pressing back and B. So, here's the thing about it, um... Shield is in, it doesn't negate damage. I wish that it did. If I remember, and I'm pretty sure it does, it only halves the damage you take. But you can use it. Mars explained this to me, and it's really weird because your shield can be used in between attacks, kind of thing. So you can actually chain your shield as many times as possible if you're quick enough. Which still pales in comparison to Gator, because Gator makes a screen dim. Yes. You can't shield dim chips, but if you can, like... If you can block non-dim chips, and you can possibly take way less damage. Again, it's one of the less sought-after styles. Especially being wood. And there being a lot of good fire chips. And your only big thing being a 10 HP barrier. That's really not good. So, try to avoid playing like a chicken. Just go in and kill. And then, finally... No, not finally, huh? We're missing... Oh, right. There's technically one after this next one. So, next is uh, the team style. Which you get by just using Navi Chips. Just use them as much as possible. And in exchange, you can now put in one more Navi or Mega Class Chip. Which is pretty significant, especially if you are, again, building a folder for Gator. Yes. Yes. Oh, no, totally. Um, It's not spectacular. I do, like, again, that's why Custom is kind of sought after over this one. 
because having seven chips, I feel, gives you a, a different kind of advantage as opposed to, well, I can just insert one more of this. So it, it it's up again. It's all about how you play. Some people like team. I can't blame them. It does give you and three. It gets crazy with what you can do with it. Uh, other than that, yeah, that's it. You you can just put another Navi or Mega Class ship. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. And I mean, and like then, anything else for it? I mean. I don't know, Styles introduced a new kind of gameplay that Mm -hmm. is kind of foregone. I think that a lot of people, if they don't get the ideal style that they want, will either reset their game, or they'll just go back to normal style, because you could toggle back between normal style and your style change in Battle Network That is That is one of the very big advantages to that. You don't have to stay in your style. You can, fortunately, switch back and take full advantage of the power-up system in that sense. Yeah. Uh, but there is one final stop, because there are five total, that only appears, this one only appears in Battle Network 2. Is it hub style. Hub style. It is hub style. It is the Deus Ex Machina of the manga. Uh, you, you, why don't you tell me, tell me about this one? I've explained four of these in a row. So, hub style gives you pretty much uh the benefits of every style combined um it gives you a barrier 10 chips in your custom you can put eight navvies in your folder buster power is double even though the rapids reduced to one um you can produce a shield but your hp is cut in half that's the only downside of it Mm. you Um, also get super armor (laughs) you do get super armor uh so it is absolutely uh if, if you're really good with maneuvering and defensive stuff and you can use Hubstyle's defensive abilities. Um, I mean, Hubstyle is an absolute great... It, it's not really a key part of the game. I feel like it's kind of an Easter egg, really. Um, because it isn't something that you just go and get. No, uh, you have to S-rank every boss battle except base in order to get it. Yeah, that's it's absurd. But, again, the payoff is nuts. It, ten chips off the start... The barrier, the double attack, all that stuff. Oh no, my HP is halved. Yes, that is not good. Which, I do believe you can still only have 1,000 HP, right? That is correct, yes. So you're playing this game at 500 HP. Which is very risky if you're going to do PvP. Especially with Gator existing. Yeah. And Undershirt not existing outside of chip form. Because Undershirt existed here. But only as a chip. So I guess you could regular chip that and just start mashing that button before Gator comes out. And just hope for the best. Yeah, because there's no TFC. You can't exactly, you know, oh, oh, I'm going to stop it. The other thing about Hub Style, though, is it's a style change only in two. However, however, it does not stop existing after two. From three on. You get the choice. You get uh, this very interesting thing on the Navi customizer called the Hub Batch, and you can pop that in. It will give you most of the effects. I think they kind of toned it down a little bit, so it's not completely broken, but it still gives you the HP having. Yes, which can be fixed with Bug Stop. If you, and then yeah. Oh, go ahead. I mean, if you, you can't even fit Bug Stop on the Navi cust. Yeah, despite three having the largest customizer, you can't fit both of those, which is like, oh. Yeah, it's kind of unfortunate. Uh, and then that goes, it goes three, four, five with the hub batch program. And then six comes along, and they take that out. Instead, they give you a giga chip called hub batch in files or only, which will give you uh, the positive effects of the hub style. You don't lose their half HP, and you get all that good stuff. Minus... You know, like Navi chip plus three, and obviously that's not going to happen. Yeah. I mean, you can do that through customizer, I guess. That is true. She's numbers. Hello, numbers. <laughs> My old friend. And of course, in Battle Chip Challenge, the hub style is just more memory but stronger chips with half your HP. I don't even think half. I think you just have less. Yeah. <laughs> which is, it's not, honestly, it's strong, but it's not even that good. It really is. <laughs> it's not even like, because half HP in that game is just asking for death. It is. It is. It's quite unfortunate, too. But, uh. Yeah, very. So, uh, a, a th- yeah, well, go ahead. Yeah, what's up? What you got? Do you want to talk about the overworld? 
I would love nothing more. <laughs> so, one of my favorite things about Battle Network 2, that is an incremental change from Battle Network 1. No cars. No cars. You cannot go through, you cannot phase through walls. Land cannot skate through them. Um, <laughs> there's no death or wrecks. Um, but I think that one of the biggest and one of my favorite changes is actually the internet in Battle Network 2. Oh my god, yeah. It is so much better. It's Every area has unique nuances. The music is a lot better. It's mm. uh, the net squares where you don't get encounters. It's a safe space, which has never been done. Uh, which, I mean, wasn't done in Battle Network 1, to my recollection. You can hit start and it'll tell you where you are. Exactly. There was just so much that was done to make the world feel more open. Like, mm -hmm. in as we discussed in episode one, um, Battle Network 1 was separated into blocks almost. It was just big. It was clunky. But Battle Network 2, it just feels more open. The internet feels more open. The encounters don't feel like, oh, every single time. Um, you know, there were warp pads that let you go as shortcuts to different parts of the internet. Um, yes, and it also introduced the one-way uh, arrows. That's true. It did. It added kind of a puzzle element to the overworld almost. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, they went kind of overboard with the one with the uh, movement tiles in Battle Network three and four, in the, like the beach area in three, and the beach area in four. Oh my god! And I think the beach area in six too. Anyway, I remember the beach area in three being just really uh, the worst, obnoxious, the worst, especially when you encountered those. Um, Je uh, big jelly virus no mm -mm, oh, nope b and three that episode's gonna be amazing we have a lot to talk about there oh, yeah. but yeah there there was a lot of capcom obviously put a lot of thought and feeling into the way that the overworld felt and the internet i mean the real world maps there were so many regions you got to go to other places in the world for Battle Network, you got to fly to Netopia, Netfrica, uh, Yumland. Yumland. I mean, there's. Oh my just... god, Netfrica, the totem every time. <laughs> Wait, Netfrica was in BN4. But you got to go to Neto. Oh, you got to go from Electopia, which is where ACDC is located, to all these other different areas, and they felt different. They felt culturally, culturally different. The NPCs yes. talked and had nuances that were different. It felt like an alive world, and Battle Network 2 really drove that home. When you went to Kotobuki at the end of the game, like it felt like a more urban area, but it just bled this deterioration because of what Grave was doing, and I absolutely adore that about Battle Network Two. <laughs> um, you got to fly on an airplane for Pete's sake and be in two. Like, come on, you get to rap at a guy to get whiskey from him. Like, come Dude, on, oh. that airplane is just way too big. So much legroom, though. Every class is first class in Battle Network Two. Real talk, huh? Like, <laughs> uh, you. It was a really big plane. It wasn't just like a cutscene plane. You could get out. You walked around. You talked to people. It was mm -hmm. nuts. You had to. And then wasn't there a grave camping. agent on the plane too? Yes, there was. There was. He was sitting in Let's plain not sight. We go camping with Speedy Dave. Oh, that's right. Quick Man's operator. Yeah. <laughs> Speedy Dave. That's such a good name. I hate Quick Man. Yeah? He's uh, absolutely my least favorite enemy boss of any battle network game is quick well i wow. take it back unless you consider serenade a boss nah, nah quick quick man is by far my least favorite just because like he deflects your buster shots okay you have to like time your attacks from a speed running standpoint it's just a nightmare it's mm -hmm. just i don't know I really like the camp out area because it just it's really like nice and you get attacked by a bear um <laughs> Not even a real bear. It's not even a real bear. You can jack into the bear. Um, mm -hmm. So. Oh. Destroy bear. <laughs> but. I, I don't know. Like just the overworld in BN2. It, it just. It was so good. I could. I could just gush about it for. For hours on end. But there's so much that's done about it. To make the world feel less static. And I think that's really nice. No, no, it's, uh, 
it, like I, I can't even add anything. It just it really does make things feel alive. There's a ton more places to jack in. There's a lot more characters to discuss, especially when you go to Electopia. There's just so much there. I don't know why the castle's there, but you know. I mean, it's a castle. There's a castle in Battle Arc 2 four. and 4. We don't and talk five. about a crappy castle. There's oh, yeah, one in five right, too. Castle. Technically, there's a castle in every one where Wily's around. I, I mean, there's always a castle when Wily's involved. Always. Mm-hmm. That's like a cardinal rule of battle. That's... No, that's not a rule of Mega Man in general because in Legends, Wily doesn't have a castle. He just has a boat shop. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. But anyway, I on the camping note. While well, let's wrap it up on that, uh, I hated the little scavenger hunt you had to do <sighs> because while BN two did a lot of things really well, it forgot to hide the fact that you're in a section of the world, so you have to find things for your camping trip, right? Mm-hmm. And. Uh, so you need like a lighter, you need some sticks, all that, and a, da, 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 a couple of other things to make a fire and get your stuff going. You have to go over to the edge of the maps usually, and it'll show. It'll just be like this big blank blue area, instead of being like trees, you know, to like maybe oh, there's nothing here, don't worry about it. And the stream maybe be a little wider. It's just it cuts off, and it, it really takes away from like you're you're really into it, and it just it pulls you out of that. And that's something I always did not like about the camping area, especially. I agree. I mean, and don't get me wrong, it's nice, but I feel like they were experimenting around with a puzzle type of thing for the real world. And I think that they they definitely improved upon it. They they hearken back to it in Battle Network 5 when they go to Oran Isle. Because uh, you have to get the bundle of sticks and the hay in order to make the fire and make scare the, off the bees, scare off the bees, and go fishing and dab with decks on the beach and things like that. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I agree. That was kind of I didn't really dig it. I like the area. It looks good. The graphics in that area, just like the sprite work for BN2. Yeah. I, I mean, most of the sprites are the same. Like the mug shots are the same. Exactly but a the lot same. of the character sprites are the same. The environment just looks considerably better. Mm. Oh, completely. Like I feel they recycled like the character assets and then just scrapped everything from the overworld and started new. Maybe minus ACDC. Yeah, ACDC. The school is the same. Yeah. Um. Even though, quote unquote, it's a different classroom because lands in a different grade. End quote. <laughs> um. How does the park say? Oh, how does the park keep changing yet it's consistent? Have you noticed that? Like the um, the equipment in the park? Yeah, like the playground. Like it'll always have the squirrel, but the squirrel will be in a fountain, and it won't be in a fountain, but then it'll be in a fountain in the game after that last one. Huh, that's a good point. Um, but no, like I feel when they got rid of, they they kept certain things, but they got rid of a lot of extra things they didn't need. They got rid of the cars. I'm sure that freed up a ton of room. Yeah. They got rid of. Like, the government center. That must have freed up a ton of room as well. And it just allowed for so much more memory to be packed onto this little 8 megabyte cartridge. It's a small little bean. This game is 8 megabytes. 8 megabytes? Oh. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't get it. Mega. Mega Man. Megabytes. What is this podcast about? Mega Man. Ooh. Battle Network. Specifically. We're saving the net. We're net saviors. Anyway. Oh. So can, yeah. we all, can we also talk about wireless jacking in? Okay. Yeah. So uh, in typical Battle Network style, Capcom also uh, kind of came up with the whole, oh, wireless is going to be a thing soon before it was a thing. But they didn't improve the pet. They kept the pet the same as Battle Network kept, 1. Kept the exact same pet. But we we are introduced to a small segment that uses wireless jacking in, which set the tone for the entire. Se- Wait, it didn't set the tone for the entire series. In fact, Battle Network Three that also pet, uses it did not use it. No, not at all. In fact, it had a chunkier cord. <laughs> it's like in fact, t- hang on. We went from an audio jack, a little three and a half millimeter audio jack, 
to a Wii U, a, pro- a proprietary. Yeah, we went to a Wii U, Jack. It, w- it well, it looked like the the Wiimote accessory connector. It actually oh, no, looks almost identical yeah. to it, except bigger. It, it, yeah, and only three prongs. In, <laughs> but yeah, I can I can talk. I mean, there's there's a whole series on my YouTube channel at youtube.com/slash MegamasterX on the pet lines. Um, there's a bunch of trivia in that, but I, I don't know. Wireless jacking was an interesting plot point. Yeah. In that so, it had to be done. <laughs> yeah, because you could not reach the other side where you could jack in. So that was in the castle, right? Yep. Yeah, and this thing, I believe, Mail gives it to you. It does, yeah, She's yeah. like, "Hey, look, I have this thing. It allows for wireless jacking in. How does that work? Here it is." Da 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 da. And then at some point in the castle, you cannot cross, but in order to make the bridge to get across, you have to jack in, but it's on the other side. So you you throw the wireless jacking device into the piece that you need. We're talking like to... needle into a thread. Yes, from a distance of like at least 8 to 10 feet. It's not, it's not close in any stretch. Land throws it, and I wish they'd actually explain how the wireless jacking in worked a little more. I mean, because it's was, literally just, I have this thing you can wireless jack into. Well, how does this work with my PET? Well, there was an adapter that is for the pet as well. Oh, is there? That's yeah. right, huh? There, Where does they, it plug into? She, uh, if I had to guess, just knowing what the first generation, well, technical, technically it's the first generation, even though we know that there is a generation of pet before the one in Battle Network yeah. 1 and 2. Um, the Gen 1 pet has a detachable handle that's actually the battery the battery right but if i had to guess that would be what would be exchanged wouldn't that be bad to pull out your battery <laughs> i mean <laughs> I, first gen pets had awful design they did it was like okay this is a fold-out keyboard with a handle in the middle and also and a, a webcam and also the battle chips go into the fold-out part Mm-hmm. And, and also, also your handles your battery which can easily be broken which is shown <laughs> it in is. the manga it is it's actually broken completely in the manga when Lan's pet is crushed by debris yeah, on the like, ship I, I just need another battery he's <laughs> like oh god I had a battery in my pocket the whole time Ch-kink. well no 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 he, it falls out of his pocket he has to reach down and he cuts his arm oh yeah that's right, <laughs> that's right. It's such a like that's such a dumb part it's like oh just put another battery in Mega Man. Yeah, what up? <laughs> hey, yo, thanks. <laughs> Land, <laughs> download the battle chip, Land. Oh my God. Surfer dude dub Mega Man is the that best. That is like Man. amazing dub, though. It's so bad. It's, I will say, the dubbing with that is on par with the voice acting in the original Mega Man cartoon. What is it, Land? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but, uh, yeah, no, so the overworld is amazing, it's immersive, it drags you in, it cuts you away sometimes, like with the camping trip, when it shows you just how limited it is, in a sense, but if you kind of go past that, because, again, they were probably experimenting again, Mm -hmm. they were saying, well, we can fit all this, but it should be fine like that, no one's gonna care, but it really messes with you, because you have to find these sticks and crap on the edge of the map, in the blue void, (laughs) <laughs> and, and that always bothered me. I did like how there were some nooks and hidden crannies, like going mm-hmm. behind the waterfall to get a regular memory. Yes, I think and you it was jack regular in. memory. You can jack in. They did something kind of similar in Battle Network Three in the zoo. You could go behind the panda cage and jack into the alarm. Not many mm-hmm. people know about that jack in spot. No, like you'll check every once, like oh the port's sealed off or it won't give you an option to jack in. And so you'll pass it up, but if you go in there, you get something special. Yeah. That's nice. It's, um, yeah. yeah, so is there anything else from that we need to cover? No, or? no, I think that's pretty much it. Um, I think that um, we've kind of touched on really everything that, that was a good, significant upgrade from Battle Network 1 to 2. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I, we also touched on the parts that I think didn't need to be there. We did, we did. So... Um, that only leaves one thing. We have Program a... advances. Yeah. So, um, my most beloved and hated topic. In Battle Network 1, in the first episode, we recapped this pretty copiously. 
Uh-huh. Um, but Battle Network 1 had a lot of very strange program advances and the an excruciatingly large amount of them. The Beta series. Oh my god. Zeta series. Zetas. Omega. Gosh. But Battle Network 2 watered it down a lot, which is great. A, a bit, a bit. They still had a few things here and there because they really wanted to hold on to that. You can throw out as many of these as you can. But... They, they did streamline it. We went from 37 to 32. We took out five and replaced a lot of the other ones. The issue, though, now becomes not so much it being broken, right? Yeah. It becomes... It gets a little convoluted because you still have things like Omega Raton, uh, Omega Cannon, Zeta Raton, Zeta Cannon... You see, it's just Zeta Cannonball. It's like, I get the idea, and it's interesting, but I feel like if you had cut out and just kept, like, one type of rats on program advance, it would have been one type okay. of Cannonball of program advance, yeah, and you could have added room. Instead, they took out a lot of the interesting ones, like Drain or the Mega Cannon. They took out the Giant Gun. Which is the They worst. took out Heavy Stamp. They took out uh, Didn't Death they take... Storm. I think they kept Gut Shoot. They kept gut shoot, yeah, because G is a huge thing. Um, but yeah, they took out the powered can. You know, they took out like the really interesting, unique ones, and kind of just gave. And they they took out a good bit of like the sig. They got rid of Sigma completely, but they added more stuff with like Omega and Zeta and all that crap. So it's good on one end that it's trimmed. On the other, it's still a little convoluted. There's room to grow. There's still room to grow. Yeah, it's and... clear that they were on the right track, but they were just, they wanted to kind of. Tread, yeah. I don't want to say tread water, but they wanted to tweak it more. Right. No, definitely. Um, the other big thing is uh, a lot of these program advances are five chips. So three chips are usually the base for things, and they, they really push that with a lot of these. Oh, they, can, they didn't get rid of heavy stamp. My bad. We kept heavy stamp. That's good. I so, think that a lot of the changes that were done to the requirements for program advances were justified because you had access to the regular chip system. Yes. Uh, but they did keep the five chip stuff, so, you know, like rats on three times five. So you would actually have to, if you wanted this, you'd have to dedicate L-M-N-O-N-P to get Omega rats on three. Which can potentially deal 900 damage. As you can throw potentially, it does ninety damage. Lasts for ten seconds. Nothing is gonna, s- <laughs> nothing is gonna be hit for that long, that hard. But that's okay. We have Gator. Uh, but yeah, they they streamlined it. It made it a lot easier to make figure things out. Uh, Gator is the go to definitive. Unfortunately, G is the best chip code in this game. It is by far, hands down. Hands down. I do believe, because this game also does something very strange, never done in prior or, you know, past this. It gives you three versions of Life Sword. Which is weird. Yeah, so, it's... it's, uh, (laughs) I'm still always befuddled by this. So, the first one is regular Life Sword. You know, Sword, White Sword, Long Sword. Good to go. 400 damage. Life Sword 2. Fire Sword, Aqua Sword, Elect Sword. 500 damage. Mm-hmm. Life Sword 3. 600 damage. Fire Blade, Aqua Blade, Elect Blade. Which, if I remember, the ones that make the second one are better, right? Isn't Fire Sword like 130 base damage? I believe so, yeah. Yeah, so you get... It, it feels kind of like a cheat in that sense. Because you get this less than ideal damage... For, I don't know, I don't know, like, oh, I can deal 500 damage, or I can just use each of these and deal, like, comparable damage, and still have options to move around. Ah. I it was dumb to do three life swords. It, I think it's interesting that they did it in Battle Network 2, and not in future installments when they could have done something like that, because of Wide Blade and Long Blade. Yes, um, in that, in future installments, the they just changed Life Sword to be doable with multiple combinations of those. 
like say for instance sword wide sword long sword or sword wide blade long blade uh -huh. you know those both equal one program advance and i think that that might have been something that battle network 2 could have benefited from yes but yeah um it's also good to note that a lot of the chips that were made only in 2 never reappear so like the blades that make up life sword 3 never come back which is kind of a shame. I really like the art on those. Uh, they were a nice little quick elemental hit. 90 damage each, but you know. Uh, and then they adapted Life Sword 2's program advance, added Bamboo Sword onto that, and now we get the four-hit sword. Yes. In three, which is fun. Tons. Tons of fun. Tons of fun. Uh, yeah, so... Good stuff. This also introduced Bodyguard. That's our favorite program advance, oh, isn't it? Oh, my, my buddy. But remember, okay, so MMX, off the top of your head, as of BN6, what is the program advance for Bodyguard? In BN6, uh -huh. uh, it is anti-damage, anti-navi, uh -huh. oh gosh. It's not uh, hard. No, I'm on the spot. It's not, I know in Battle Network 3 it's anti-damage, anti-navi, Muramasa. Okay, in... so let's replace the Muramasa <sighs> with another sword. Is it anti-sword? It is. It's anti-navi, anti-sword, yeah. anti-damage. Yeah. And that gives you 100 damage for 10 hits. So up to 1,000 if you can somehow hit all of those, which is nay impossible in PvP. I failed my program advance test. It's okay. It's not easy remembering that garbage. No one uses it. <laughs> I mean, I, I use it, but... What? How do you use it? You don't even know the order. No. <laughs> I, I look at... it. So a secret is, when I play Battle Network 6 PvP, I have, like, game facts up on my oh. other monitor, and the only thing I do is control F bodyguard and be like, okay, is this the correct order? I do that, too. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, bodyguard is actually pretty tricky. If you don't get the combo right, you don't get it. Looks well, like I'm, any program advance. I'm so I have battle network threes ingrained into my skull. So well, I'm yeah, like, that one's easy. Yeah, because Muramasa is attached to it. But in two, so we don't have we have anti damage in two. We don't have the anti navi anti sword thing yet, though. Instead, right. we use drop down s anti damage s shadow man. And you take a hit. No, you don't even take a hit. You don't even take it. Shadow Man just shows up and starts throwing 18 shurikens for 100 damage each. Which is insane. Yeah, especially in a boss fight. Ooh, You can drop uh, Gospel more than halfway down with that. <sighs> so broken. Can we talk Very about God, the Gospel Cannon program advance with base? That's not real. Darkness? That doesn't exist. Darkness doesn't exist. No, it exists. Uh, so this one is weird because you can't use it outside of Japan or cheating. Which is unfortunate because yeah, it's take, in future installments. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's, I don't know. I it's just... Space's signature move in future installments, in fact. Yeah. Uh, so this one's interesting because it takes base, version 3 only. It takes X chips of all things. Base version 3 anti-navi x and this is the part why it's only limited to japan you can use you have to use the fire aqua elect or wood gospel which deal a ton of damage in their own right but when combined with this it deals three thousand damage it's also called it, dark messiah yeah darkness is a, and dark messiah it's uh it's a crazy like that name is just like whoa, whoa sign me up yeah, you hit six of the nine panels on your opponent's side, and one in their area. Like, so it, it does like uh, Gregor does with his chip. It does like that exact thing. It hits the first one, then it pans out. And then, after Gospel's done breathing on you, base uses Earthbreak, and on the closest column, it breaks all the empty panels. So, if you area grab with this, you, you, you can't It's guaranteed lose. hit. Yeah. There's uh, speaking of Japanese versus America um, differences, we didn't mention the Prism glitch. Uh, that's right. In I that Pr Prism is a chip that if you hit Prism with a certain with another chip, it mimics the damage. Right. There is a bug in the Japanese version where if you use Prism and Forest Bomb 
one, two, or three, um, it does 100, 120, or 150 damage for Force Bomb 1, 2, and 3, respectively, times 90. <gasps> times? Yes. <gasps> it, it, it only works in the Japanese version. Um, oh, they fixed that. Oh, my lord. There's another um, couple of combos that are pretty devastating. You can use Ice Line or Ice Stage, and oh. obviously any other electric chip, or Lava Line or Lava Stage... Uh, and any fire element chip, and it doubles the effectiveness of that. So oh Battle Hour 2 tunneled in on the elemental side of the game for the battle system that was really unexplored. But yeah, I felt it was worth mer- it merited mentioning the Prism Glitch because it's also Japanese exclusive. No, no, that's a very fair point. I had no idea it was times 90. That's insane. Yeah, it's, it's busted. Uh, BN2 is also the game that introduced Prism. Yeah. Which... It uh, Didn't Prism last long. definitely opened. No, no, it, it <laughs> went for one game after that, and then it disappeared. Unfortunately, I feel Prism was a good idea, but <clears throat> just the amount of abuse you could do with it was absurd. Yeah, and it, it was yeah. it was nuts. I mean, I I think that, I mean, we can probably put a link in the show notes to show a video of the Prism glitch in action. It's actually pretty interesting oh, to see. Um, I could probably splice it in. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, uh, um, but, yeah. So, program advances, more streamlined, still a little convoluted, but getting to where we want them to be and how we know them today. More unique, uh, none really the same as the last. No. But it, it took a few games to get it right. Because why, why would you want to let go of something that sounds so cool, like Omega uh, Cannonball, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, so, is there anything else I think we're missing on BN2? Uh, the I... music was a lot better. Uh, oh, that is one thing. So, in the previous episode, we mentioned that when you got to the Undernet and World 3 area, you had no idea they were different. They looked pretty much the same. Ex- ex- that's really it. Um, in this one, though, the music changes when you reach the Undernet and Gospel area along with everything you know the paths looking actually different so you knew you were somewhere you were going to get your ass whipped like yep. there was no two ways about it if i'm not careful here i'm going back to the title screen it also makes a point in the plot to tell you pretty consistently that hey this is the internet it's not a place for the faint of heart you're mm-hmm. probably going to die but yeah. you got to go in there to the best plot yeah, two definitely started the push of the internet being a place of like stronger stuff and hidden programs and things like that, relics of the past, if you will. Yep, because that's where you find a lot of um, like in three. The internet's a whole big plot point where you have to find the freeze program. Yep, that's correct. And you also which fight is something base. that's been yeah. Wait, well, <laughs> where you fight fireman and then you base destroys fireman. Yeah. But it, it's like the freeze program is just this relic from the past that uh, Tadashi Hikari made, but it was lost and now it's hidden under here. It's a good feel. It gives like that dark net, real, like the real life dark net feel to it. It's like, what can I find down here? Hmm. Better be careful, though. It also described <clears throat> that the Undernet is actually like the beta version of the Internet. Yes, which and... mimics real life as well, where the dark net... Uh, supposedly, in the actual deep web part, is you can find the ARPANET, which is the outline of the original internet. Which is crazy. It's yeah, just like I, that. It's a really good plot point. I think Capcom did a great job with writing oh, and no, totally. involving the internet. That's the one thing I really liked about Battle Network, though. It's like it's this weird kind of meta lore that isn't really said. We discussed in the first episode. It's not really said, but if you look deep enough, you find similarities. You find things that are said, written, and then you're just like, wow, that's really interesting. I never thought of it that way. Exactly. Along with spearheading and calling out technology before it's made. Comes good like that. That's kind of creepy. It does. It does. I'm trying to think. Battle Number 2, I can talk bad about a few things here and there. It's still a good game. It is a fantastic game. You explore a world for the first time. Uh, you 
There's there is swearing in this game. Oh yeah. yeah. And drinking and alcohol references. Yes. Yes. You also get uh, mugged. That's kind of cool. You get mugged. There's um hint what what's the word I'm looking for? They they hint that people are being murdered. Yeah. While you're in the castle. That's true. <laughs> It's, it's pretty it's, dark. It has some pretty dark nuances. Yeah. That being said, I will say maybe two might actually be the darkest game in the series for that sense. Mm. I would I mean, say I that Battle Network Four <clears throat> oh, with the dark on. chips kind of. Goes. I knew you were going to pull this. <laughs> um. No mm. puns here, please. Oh, there are going to be puns. <laughs> no. <clears throat> got my throat hmm. but yeah I there's a few bad points it's still rough it's still molding itself into its own type of thing to you know get away from the first game but it still pays enough homage to it that it feels Similar. it still feels like the. I don't know it feels like an upgrade in every sense it is and that's certainly not a bad thing I no. love Battle Armor 2 it's a great it's a game, good game. I, I didn't, I will be honest, I remember a lot of it from playing it post uh, 3. Because I skipped 2, went to 3, and then came back to 2 after that. And I was just like, oh, it's like 1, but with some better things. And it felt a lot better. Yeah. Also, under his shirt was a chip, which was weird. That, yes, and air shoes. And air shoes. Air shoes was a thing in 3 as well, even though you could have the chip and the code. You still had... I'm sorry, you could have the code and the uh, customized program, and you could have the chip as well. Yeah, it's super weird. Yeah. But I get um, it. I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So 2 is a great game. Built off of 1 in every way it should have, and set the stage for what I will always say is the epitome. It is the top of the food chain in Battle Network games. To come. Battle Network 4. I, Really? <laughs> I'm gonna beat you with my copy. <laughs> just, I'm gonna tape it to my hand and just beat you with it. <laughs> Have a, a fistful of red sun. I gotcha. <laughs> and a mouthful of blue moon. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, I I do I I like it. I think it's a great game. I agree with everything that you said. Honestly, I really don't have anything else to add to that myself. One last thing I'll add is. <clears throat> One last thing I'll add is, I feel like 2 definitely focuses on the story moving everything forward more. 1 did, one obviously uses the story, it's an RPG in every sense. But I feel like it takes kind of a backseat to you trying to figure out where things are. Whereas 2, you don't, you are directed because of the layout of the world. And the story is a lot more involved. And there's a lot more characterization in there. So... The events unravel themselves in a very linear fashion in that there's always something to do. There's yes. always some kind of event that you're in or some kind of pending threat or there's just something like, there's something going. You you're not left wandering around trying to find your direction and uh-huh. the L button isn't helping you to talk to Mega Man like it was in Battle Network One. Like in Battle Network One, you could easily lose your way. And then Mm -hmm. just be like, okay, well, where's this place on the internet that I have to go? I don't know where the Scilab area is because everything looks the same. But in Battle Network 2, you're like, oh god, I just got mugged and all my battleships are gone. Or, Mm -hmm. you know, I can't find Mega Man or um, I've got to go rap to this guy on the plane for whiskey. You know, there's all, you know what you're doing. God. At, at pretty much all times in Battle Right, Warfare because two. there's distinction, and you feel like, oh, I don't actually have to ask Mega Man and get a slightly cryptic message. Exactly. Uh, didn't 2 also introduce the message boards? It did. Yeah. And the jobs, right? And the jobs. Um, it yeah. also had the license system, which kind of gated the content of the game. Yes, which, it was a good gate, though. You couldn't just run into everything... And it definitely made you feel a lot more involved. It, uh, it gave something to do in between crisis. You almost strived for it. Yeah, I mean, who wouldn't want an S, you know, rank license? Exactly. Uh, it introduced a lot of nice things. Um, I'm trying to think, what else did it do? It did. It just did so much. Ah. It did. 
when you take a step back, I mean, Battle Network 2 looks like an incremental upgrade, but in reality, it's a little bit more than that. It's, it really is, it's a clear step in the right direction of Capcom's ideal for what Battle Network is to be. Yes, it is the leap forward. From the time you turn on that screen and you hear that familiar music from just, one, but it's got more like depth to it now. It's got a little bit more instrumental going for it. It's got more reverb and it's like, oh yeah, here we go, man. Even the logo looks sleeker. Mm-hmm. That big sexy uh, glowing orbin too. Unless you're playing like the European version. Oh no. Why do the Europeans always get bad box art? Every time. Like it's just so weird. And when I was at too. Awesome Games Done Quick, uh, Draco Dan, um, uh, speedrunner who runs battle network games as well mm-hmm. as well as sparkster um he had the european copies of battle network 4 oh, wow. and sick uh he had no excuse me he had the european copies of battle network 3 and he looked at i looked at his sp when he turned it on i'm like what it looks so weird like why are the letters like that <laughs> what what are you doing capcom i don't understand <laughs> but, uh, yeah localization is very odd uh i still remember seeing like the Mega Man zero stuff and just being really confused at how bad it looked like here's all this official art uh i'll just kind of trace over and make my own pretty much it's pretty much what happened <laughs> so yeah so. no two is the big leap forward it pushes the series in the right direction and leads up to three which is the top for me i don't i'm sure a lot of other people feel one way or the other on that i'm sure a lot of people like six more maybe there's somebody like four which i highly advise you seek help or battleship challenge but that game's before this. But it's better. But it takes place before and after. <laughs> what if it takes place during? What if it takes... <laughs> what if it's Land's Daydream in class? Well, like, really, really, think about it. It says to be continued in 2. That does not mean it has to take place before 2. But it has to take place before 3. Which would explain why Beast Man is here, possibly. Possibly. Ah, there we go. Something. I think we're uncovering a new rabbit hole. So you just you have to pause to play Battleship Challenge and then go to the next scene when Lamb wakes up. There you go. We got problem solved. Well, I think mystery solved, Scooby. <laughs> All right. Zoinks. So Adele. Yes, moving think, past it. I think it's time for us, or for me specifically, to make uh, an announcement. What do you think? Uh, All right. I you know I'm so tempted to make a gay joke, but it's not in good taste. <laughs> So, on this episode of the Net Sabers podcast, I'm, I'm going to try this again. Three off. I hope I'm that, leaving this in. Oh, my God. On this, episode so of, on this episode of the Net Sabers podcast, I'm going to be announcing the next dates and details for the N1 Grand Prix Season 2. I can't wait. I've been kind of tight-lipped about this because I'm trying to get a lot of the details there. I've done some upgrades to the uh, to the bot that we have on Discord, Colonel Bot. Mm-hmm. Um, so the I've link heard. to the N1 Grand Prix Discord will be in the show notes and in the description of the video on YouTube. But yeah. um, the N1 Grand Prix going forward, we're working with Team Battle Network, uh, the speedrunner community, in order to stream the tournament events to their channel rather than to my own personal channel, which you can still follow if you like at twitch.tv slash MegamasterX. So you're saying by doing this, you'll get a wider audience. That's correct. Because oh. we we both, we bo- both Team Battle Network and the N1 Grand Prix, we both love Mega Man, right? We yes. both have communities that ha- that care about Mega Man and love the game to a point where we will play it to death in one capacity or another, be it competitive or speedrunning. So, what if they hate it so much they just speedrun it to get it over with? What if that's why they speedrun it? <laughs> God. So going forward, the N1 Grand Prix events will be broadcast on the Team Battle Network Twitch channel. You can follow them at twitch.tv slash teambn. That's Team mm-hmm. B as in Bravo and as in Nancy. And um, so if oh, you nice. give them a follow, those, those uh, events will be streamed there. Um, also, they're going to be doing a marathon pretty soon, so stay tuned to that. You can also follow the posts on the uh, Mega Man Battle Network subreddit at reddit.com slash r slash battle network. Um, but now, I, I guess enough of the teasing, um, the next N1 Grand Prix, the streams for the N1 Grand Prix uh, are going to be on July 1st, 2017. 
we're going to be doing we're going to be doing the tournament in a similar fashion to the end of season one which was last year we had a lot of really good uh, learning experiences the format was really good we got a lot of really good feedback about the commentary and how we did the stream so we're going to be doing pools matches in swiss format for the first um, part of the tournament on one day and then we're going to be doing a single elimination best of five top eight instead of a best oh. of three so we're going to be having a lot more involved top eight matches that are going to showcase these players amazing incredible skill um and uh yeah so signups are going to be opening on june 19th they're going to be closing on june 26th and then the top the pools matches will be streamed on the first and then the top eight will be streamed on the second so they will be uh, the times and everything else will be announced kind of at a future time. Um, keep an eye out on the Battle Network subreddit. Again, follow the Discord. An announcement will be made when signups do open. And uh, yeah, so I'm really looking for looking forward to Season 2. We're going to be having an event in the summer during college summer break, school summer break. And we're also going to be having another uh, event in the winter. Those dates are going to be determined in the future. I don't want to... To go into those quite yet because that's a little far off but we are only going to have two major events uh for the m1 grand prix in season two prizes are to be determined there's still a lot of this up in the air but uh i figured this would be a good a time as any to let people know when the next m1 grand prix event's going to be so again signups are going to be opening uh june 19th so keep your eyes out that's actually really exciting with the top five that's uh it's got me pumped we might have to interview some people I would absolutely love to get some of the top net battlers in here and uh, ask them a few questions, maybe talk some PvP at some time. We're calling you out, Salad. Yeah, we're... This is it. This is it. This is it. Maybe get Nareth in here? I don't know. Oh, Disco. baby. Let's, let's no, see. uh... Let's get Aqua. Aqua? Oh, my God. I, okay, no, I might cut this part out, but can we actually talk to Aqua? We probably need a translator. Yeah, I just thought about that, because my Japanese ain't that fucking good. <laughs> no, no, we, we don't have good Nihongo, but... But yeah, no. um, so yeah, that's definitely something that's in the uh, that's possible in the cards. I mean, uh, the competitive community has grown, and uh, we've... Uh, the Discord has recently just hit 500 members. Oh, baby. So uh, we're absolutely growing. Um, if you'd like to get started in competitive Mega Man Battle Network 6 PvP, now is certainly the time. We have a community full of people that are more than happy to show you the ropes, uh, mm -hmm. help triage your competitive folder, get you show on the you right the page. secrets of the Corn Fiesta. Uh, that's that's a closely guarded N1GP secret, my friend. But uh, it is the key to victory in any is. net folder. It is. You have to have it. It's the best program advanced in Battle Network 6. Really? Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. I know we're 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 joking, but Corn Fiesta's damage is really good if you got the setup. If you <laughs> So I went to the lab with Corn Fiesta. There's a way to get off eighteen hundred damage if in uh, like an absolute perfect storm scenario. Is this where I like capture them in the corner and just blow it off in their face? If you're one square if you have one square in between you and your opponent, they're in the bottom corner, you have full synchro. So that's that's why I run the humor glitch or the is it the humor glitch or color bug? I run one of those bugs that gives you random Emotion emotions. Yeah. yeah. So if you if you're in anger status or full synchro and you pop corn fiesta, yeah. It, so the optimal way is I'm here, there's a space and then my opponent. Yes, that is correct. And they're in the corner. Uh, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. So it yeah, doesn't spread. Okay. That is that is uh, absolute optimal positioning for it. Now, also, you could technically point blank it, but it's just it feels better to have that just <laughs> optimal. Right, because it doesn't cast over itself because it takes up the square in front of you, yep. right? Well, no, okay. it, it it if you pop it point blank range, it'll still hit, but it just won't hit as much. So really? it's 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 all RNG in the end. It's a matter of gaming RNG in your favor. But enough about program advances and corn fiesta and competitive stuff. Hey, I learned two new things today. Hot there damn! You go. There you go. Teaching, teaching. We're getting learned. But uh, <laughs> if you have any questions about competitive Battle Network Six, feel free to join the Discord. The link again is in the show notes or the description. You can also find it at the sidebar at reddit.com/r/ battle network. If you have any questions about that, the tournament, or anything else like that, please feel free to PM me directly. And please. Feel free to ask us about competitive BN3 gameplay, yeah. which there is none. Just use Folderback and Flashman Plantman. You win. That's it. That's all there is. That's it. That really is. You win. 
That's not nice. <laughs> we're Gator in BN2. We're... Wow. Wow, wow, yeah. No, I'll, we'll never get over how broken Gator is. It's just... The bu- is, it's busted. It's 900 damage. You and can't... You can get, and geez, it's perfect, because you can do that and gut shoot. It dims. It does, yep. You can't dodge it. It's undodgeable damage. And no TFC exists yet. None. Not at all. It's great. But yeah. Uh, so Adele, where can people find you on the wide interwebs? Uh, not again. Okay, so. <laughs> people can find me at twitch.tv slash tactical underscore network. Twitter.com slash trainer underscore Adele. You notice I like the underscore here. And of course, on YouTube where you are, I hope, currently watching this episode. If not, I'm going to go after someone. Uh, that's really it for me. What about you? Uh, you can find me on Twitch as well at twitch.tv slash MegamasterX. Also, I am on Twitter at MegamasterX. You can find me on YouTube at youtube.com slash MegamasterX. I'm a pretty easy you, person to find. You have the easiest... Uh, but yeah, I, you can I, find me on all those networks. Again, like I said, if you uh, definitely follow the subreddit for Battle Network to keep up to date with this, to provide feedback on the episode, you can leave a comment in the comment section of the YouTube video or on the post on Reddit uh, on the Battle Network subreddit. You can also or, reach us. Yeah, join us in the Discord. Yeah. We, uh, yeah. We're always looking for new faces to join the community. We talk uh, memes quite a bit. Fresh meat. The freshest memes? Hello? I said meat, baby. Well, we also have fresh memes. Uh, we also so, have they're, strategic... They're, they're a little, they're a little uh, lukewarm at this point. But, you know, uh, okay. We'll probably spice up soon. Oh, baby. But, uh, but yeah, so that's... Uh, I think that's going to wrap up Net Saviors episode two. Uh, Adele, thank you very much for your time. And uh, yeah. Yeah, thank you for joining me, Mega Master X. And uh, we'll be back in the next two weeks after we upload this. Going to get our notes together. This was... Uh, there's so much to discuss, and it's really hard to condense everything into just, like, one episode. Because I'm sure you and I could talk for quite a while on every little stupid thing we like about this game. Easily. Oh, the bear looks really good with its sprite. Or, ooh, I like some of the dialogue here. Or, oh, I hate that they kept these sprites in. But when you have to condense notes, it takes a little time. But, like I said, two weeks. Give us two weeks each time. We'll have something nice for you. Join us in the Discord to chat it up. Please leave your feedback. I'm not going to beg for a like. I don't really care. <laughs> I mean, it gives it gives us a good gauge. Are we doing a good job? Toss oh, that's us a like. right, huh? Yeah, that's right. If you, if you, it does give us a good thing, huh? Anyway, yeah, give me a like. Subscribe if you want. We're doing more of these. Yeah. Um, join us in Discord. Leave the feedback. Let us know if we did anything wrong. Anything you want to hear in the future. We will be sure to cover it. Ask questions. Like, that's a form of feedback. Again, we love yeah. to hear from the community. The, uh, Mega, the Battle Network community is huge. And they love talking about every stupid little thing. They're still finding stupid glitches in these games. We just and, found out that you can mash out a paralysis in Battle Network 6 a couple, like, last year. So, <laughs> we're learning so much still. I kind of figured that was a thing. Because most fighters, most Capcom fighters do that. It wouldn't surprise me if they added it into Battle Network. It's just we did hard data research on it. We, like, wow. figured out exactly how many frames of input you're less than by for each input. It's crazy. It's like three frames per each input. Oh, wow. Actually, that's kind of big. Yeah, it's pretty big. So it makes a huge difference. But yeah, Mm. so that's going to be it for Net Saviors. I'm Mega Master X. I'm Adele. Next time, we talk about the Navi Customizer. Oh, baby, the best game. Here it comes. Here we go. Tune in next time. Thanks for watching. And that wraps up our second episode of the Net Saviors podcast. Thank you all for listening, and I hope you've enjoyed it greatly. We'll be back in a couple of weeks where we cover Battle Network 3. Until then, take care everyone, and keep busting those viruses. A big thank you to Koki Remix for the music used in this episode. If you'd like to hear more, be sure to check out their YouTube at Koki Remix.